Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. We are in for pool today. We've just got back from a short trip to Dubai. A week away, it was nice, a little bit of sun, a little bit of a change in environment. But I said it in a post, nothing beats this place, nothing beats home. As much as it's cold and it's dark and you have to spend three hours in front of a loomy light to get any sort of sunlight exposure, uh, this is the place, this is home for us. So. As I said, we've got Paul today. I'm actually gonna let Loz do a lot of the talking during the session, because we're gonna cover a little bit about how to build muscles as a female, whether there's any differences. But also, we're gonna talk a little bit about how we've changed some of Loz's back training, because it was inherently a little bit of a weak point. And perhaps if I get a photo across to Alex, uh, we can sort of put a little bit of a side-by-side -side of, of Loz's back development over the course of the last 12 months which has been uh, pretty impressive. You know, she's, in my eyes, and this is being a harsh coach, not a blowing smoke boyfriend, she's probably built about 10 pounds of muscle in one year, which is uh, pretty significant, um, but definitely possible at her training age. You know, she's only young, she's actually very, very new to training properly and training hard in a surplus. So, I mean, she can talk more about her, her progress and, and where she's at uh, in and amongst this training session. A uh, little bit of an update on where I'm at. So I'm now just into the high 160s. So about 169 pounds. My stage weight was 152. So a good sort of like 15 pounds above stage. I'm feeling a lot better. I definitely am not exactly where I want to be just yet in terms of gym performance and I think also just energy. I'm still waiting for a lot of those things to come back a little bit. So I think with uh, Christmas, uh, New Year, etc., cetera, um, a little bit more food coming in, a bit more relaxation. And uh, by the new year, by the second week of the new year, we should be like all systems go to get, you know, some, some stuff that I've never done in, in the gym before, which uh, I'm really excited to document. And we're going to get back into sort of doing at least a, a once, a once a week or maybe a couple of times a month video for you guys to follow my off season for the whole of 2022. I'm going to show you what it looks like a little bit more because last year I couldn't. You know, last year we got interrupted with the lockdowns and uh, I wasn't able to actually produce content for basically four or five months of what was a very productive off season phase. So, uh, yeah, uh, prepare to see lots of heavy lifting. Lots of progressive training, um, and of course, you'll witness the the face getting much, much fatter as well. So uh, that's that's going to be fun to follow. At least it won't be as shocking as when I went from stage lean to end of the off season with the last YouTube videos. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we'll get into this pool session. Hope you're all having a fantastic festive period whenever you watch this, and we'll speak uh, we'll speak downstairs for the first exercise. So not really an exercise here that we're counting towards the session. This is more so just activation work and getting blood in the area. Uh, the gym's a little bit cold, obviously, in the winter months. So before pretty much any body part that we train, we always just get warm, get blood everywhere. First exercise is actually going to be a pull-up for both of us. I believe Loz will still be doing some sets on the assisted pull-up because she's not yet at a strength level where she can really perform a good couple of sets on a standard pull up with a body weight, but she's working towards that. Okay. Might look a bit weird that, but I find like, Pull-ups especially, like the harshness of the stretch position, for me sometimes uh, plays up with my shoulder joint a little bit. So I know it looks really weird, not something that you probably want to be doing unless it feels safe. But I do just hang and sort of, I guess that's kind of for me freeing up my scapula and my shoulder joint just a little bit. 
um, so that when I go into the work set with the, uh, with the loaded set, I'm confident in that stretch position that something isn't gonna go like ping here. Um, but this, this shoulder's actually hurting quite a bit because I had my, uh, my booster jab. Uh, probably shouldn't say that because the video's now gonna get banned. But uh, yeah, I had that the other day and uh, hurts a little bit, so I have to be cautious. Also looks twice the size, so um, I'm not gonna do any posing in this video, but if, you, if, if I was, it'd probably look like I got synth in that delt. So AJ's obviously starting with normal bodyweight pull-ups and then he's adding some weight on those as well. Um, well, as I'm pretty sure he's already mentioned, like my back is nowhere near as strong as AJ's is. And I've done a lot of work over the past year to try and bring that up. Um, and pull-ups are still something that, to be honest, I still struggle to do, like even bodyweight. Um, my lats, my back as a whole, just still isn't quite strong to do those yet. So um, I'm actually gonna do the assisted pull-up to start with instead. Um, and because this is at the start of the session, like if you're someone who doesn't get instant activation in your lats, like you don't connect just naturally, um, it might be something that's even worth just implementing in to just help you get that initial activation before you go into the rest of the session. Um, so I tend to start with this, and as I'm warming up to do my two sets on this, um, I do keep these sets within the higher rep range um, just to make sure that connection is there. Um, just take your time warming up. Um, because you want to make sure that you're getting that activation, you're getting that connection, and then that'll get some good blood flow there um, to feed you into the rest of the session from there. Another thing that's also really important with like pull downs or pull ups or any movements like this, where you are actually using your lats as well, is Make sure, particularly at the start of the session too, that you're spending a good amount of time in both positions, so like the stretch position or like the shortened position as well. Like, don't just kind of like go straight up and down. Like, spend some time like in the stretch, spend some time like in that short and contracted position so you can feel super, super confident and rinse both parts of that movement. Um, and then you'll feel really confident going into those working sets as well. Oh! Fuck me! Fucking hell! Oh, fuck! Cunt. Accidentally loaded the wrong weight here. So that's a, a fantastic start to the session. A five rep pull up. <laughs> Fuck me. Oh dear. Yeah, I went, I, I, I did 25 kilos for nine reps last time and I wanted to go 30 and for some reason I loaded, uh, I loaded 35. And 10 kilos on a pull up when you've also gained six pounds is uh, quite heavy, funnily enough. So I think we'll try again with the appropriate weight. Probably just do, do 25 now and try and beat last rep last week. but. To be honest, when you miss load like this, it actually benefits you in some cases because this is now going to feel extremely light in comparison to doing 35 kilos. So, but I look on the bright side.
Easy. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, oh, come on. Come on. Come on, big fucking threat now. Let's go. Here we go. Strong. Come on, AJ. Oh. Come on. Slide, slide, slide. Jewel on Domoro has like a little bit of a limited uh, time span on it in terms of progressions because uh, now the dumbbells are so wide that they actually, when I bring them into the position in which, which I want to grip, uh, they actually touch. So they almost like form one merged dumbbell rather than two. So it feels a bit weird. Um, and so I think, you know, the next thing for me will be just going to a barbell bend over row. Now that I've got to the 60s with what what I appreciate as, as solid execution is, yeah, it's not it's not perfect, but if you want a big back and your rows look like something out of like a exercise library, probably not gonna have a big back, bottom line. So back offset will be a bit more perhaps fluid in terms of, of, of execution, but that top set is always gonna be a bit of grip and rip and I promise you if you do that in a smart and strategic way you're gonna have a good back yeah good good come on lovely yep 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 done done good Here we go, come on. Good. Yes. Yes. Come on, AJ. Hey! Yes. Oh. Good. Fuck. Fuck, yeah. Hey. See us treat this a little bit differently to, well, I say treat it differently. It's just a different concept of, of what we're trying to achieve with the movement. Like a dual on dumbbell row, it's fine to get a little bit, like I said, grip and rip. Um, and with the pull downs or with anything where we're trying to sort of isolate a specific part of our back. Because a lot of people ask like, are you trying to target a specific part of your back with the dual arm row? Uh, not really. Um, it's pretty much, like the entire posterior chain that you're gonna be training when you're in a hip hinge position. Like you're gonna be challenging your glutes, you're gonna be challenging your erectors, you're gonna be challenging your upper back. If you wanna ask like what part of the back is gonna challenge the most, it's probably upper back and erectors. So coming across to like a, a here, which is like a lat movement, we are thinking a little bit more about what we're, what we're doing and, and trying to make sure that the the, the, the alignment and, and everything about the movement fits the bill for the goal. So the goal here is lats. So um, we can sort of talk a little bit with Loz about how she's improved her lat training on, on this exercise in particular.
So this is a movement again, kind of like when I was doing the assisted pause at the start, I've had to really work on to engage my lats. Um, so we obviously take the neutral grip on this because it helps you get a better alignment with the lats as well from your elbow joint. Um, so on this, I always think about keeping my grip relatively neutral, maybe a little bit supinated if you've got D handles or something like that. This grip is a little bit supinated by like its nature. Um, and then just focusing on keeping the elbows tucked in because you'll see that that allows your elbow to actually drive in in line with your lats. If you're thinking about pulling your elbows out or all the way back, you're not using your lats at that point anymore. So it's thinking like logistically about what aligns with your actual lat there. Um, so always think about keeping them tucked in and again, spending time in both ranges as well. Um, I did spend like quite a bit of time where I didn't fully lengthen um, because I did have a bit of a shoulder injury and it helped because it helped my shoulder get better, but it wasn't really helping me grow my lats as best as I could. So although you might be able to move a lot of weight when you're like limiting the range, like if you actually take it all the way into the stretch and all the way into the short and spend time in both, you know you're rinsing everything out of your lats, so make sure that you're taking full advantage of both of those positions as well. Here we go. Yes, 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 yes. There we go, all the way. Um. Nice. So um, another pro tip on this as well. You'll notice when I was doing my uh, dual arm and my rows, I actually took my shoes off because it helps with stability. But now the, uh, the platform converse are back on and it actually helps me like actually touch the floor when I do this so I can actually get stability and a contact point with the floor. Um, otherwise my feet just pretty much dangle or I'm like on my tiptoes. So anyone who is like on the shorter end, like I've seen it not just with myself but like with clients, like anyone below like five foot four, sometimes you will struggle to actually get stable and get into movement. So either like put some platform shoes on or put some plates under your feet um, just to make sure that you are actually getting locked in, getting that good contact point as well. That's good. That's good. Yep, 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 yep. Good. Yes. Perfect. There you go, come on. Yes, 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 and again. Yes, finish it, good. Come on, come on. Go, 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 go.
All yours. Come on. Yes, good. There we go. Powerful. Yes, good. All day. All day. Yes, good. More. More, more, come on. Drive it back, drive it back. Yes, and again, yes, come yes. On. Take this now. Yes, all the way. Good. There you go. Woo. Yes. So that was our second upper back movement for the day. Um, obviously chest supported now because We've got legs tomorrow and we can only really load the lower back like once in this session. Otherwise, we'll go into legs tomorrow, especially with the barbell back squat. We'll just not be able to perform as well as we would like on that movement. So remember when it comes to exercise selection, it's not just the sequence of the day, but it's the, it's the, it's the micro cycle over the week. So like one exercise we do today will affect tomorrow or two days time or three days time. So you've got to think long term as well as short term. Let go, let go. Come on. That's your set. Lovely. Brilliant. So the challenge here comparative to, I mean, when you're looking at a pull down, most, well, pretty much all pull downs, unless you're on a prime or something like that, you're going to get a little bit more challenge for the light in the shortened position, in the contraction. So it makes sense to kind of place that at the front end of the session. And then something like this, where there is a little bit more of a drop off in the short, and there's actually a lot, a lot more of a challenge in the length. And so in the stretch position of the lap, it makes sense to have this guy sort of later in the session. So um, yeah, if, you, if you're programming this, like, uh, my preference is put it more so at, at the back end, um, but there's n literally no reason realistically why you couldn't do it at the front as well. Um, it's it just my preference and from a sort of resistance profile side of things, it makes sense to put it a bit later. There we go. So on things like this, where there's not much of a, like a massive cardiovascular or, or, or sort of like brain function challenge, I don't really care too much about how much I rest between arms. Plus uh, this arm is, this side is stronger, so I'm always gonna do it second uh, because I, I almost want to go on my weaker side first so I can ap apply the most intent 
Uh, and then I, I match with this side relatively easy, even with a relatively short rest period. So, but on things like a split squat, uh, where there's a lot more going on, there's a lot more moving parts, there's a cardiovascular challenge, I would rest for as long as you need. <clears throat> and typically with rest periods, just rest as long as you need. That literally is the most basic, but be most beneficial advice. Yep. Let me have it. That's it, come on. There we go, there we go. Down, 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 down. Yep, good, love it. Last back exercise of the day is done by pullovers. A movement that you don't see a lot of people do anymore because there's a lot of reasons to suggest that there's better movements to do. But again, if you, if you, if you get along well with a the movement, there's no reason why you can't do it just because there might be better ones out there. There might be a cuff, um, single arm, pullover that might be more favourable. Uh, I mean, it's push and shove this game. You've got to find things that work for you. I know for a fact that these feel amazing. I do a high rep set, I follow up with a heavy set just because it's a pretty dangerous movement. Um, like that stretch position is why I put it at the end just because you want a lot of blood and uh, sort of uh, mo movement and, and, and looseness to the back before you go into something like this. So I definitely wouldn't recommend putting it first. Um, so I put it right at the end and, and yeah, I, I'm getting along well with it. So give it a shot. If you don't like it, you don't like it. If you like it, great. See if it, see if it works. <laughs> the last time I did my heavy set, I did the 42s for nine. So I've just gone ahead and grabbed the 50s for one reason. Um, I, I really do think one of the most common issues with new movements is that it's very hard to actually understand where your real limit is. So I actually find it's quite helpful and you might see me completely flop this, but to do something that you almost think is out of your reach and see if it's there. If it's there, brilliant. Because otherwise, the, from the 42s to the 50s, I might have four weeks of just sandbagging progression until I reach something that's actually hard at the 50s. Whereas if I try the 50s today, and I know that they're not there yet, I realistically know that that progression model between the 42s and the 50s is needed to take me there. Whereas if the 50s move for a good amount of reps or good form, I can then now use progression models to creep higher and higher up the dumbbells and I've jumped to where I actually should be. And this is a new movement for me, so this is not something you do on something that you've had in for a long time. This is something you're gonna to have to do with things that are new, that you're still learning that intensity that you need to produce in the movement. Light, light, light. Five reps. Fine. So uh, I need that. I need that ladder to get to those, which is it's, it's cool. Right, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> so I got the 42s for nine last time. So I was expect I'd, I'd have liked to have had six there in all honesty, but I know that next time I'll probably get a good set with the 46s. I probably don't need to do the 44s. 
they're probably a, a void weight for me, realistically. So, yeah, but that's fine. So, Loz obviously doing it with the rope here. Some cues that you want to be thinking about on this is, is in that stretch position. You don't want to ever be thinking back. You just literally want to be thinking down. So, it's a straight arm pull over for a reason or pull down for a reason, should I say. So, you want to pull down, not back. Imagine you've got pads on your um, on your elbows and just push those pads down. Oh, one of my favorite bicep moves is here. Just realistically, because it just keeps you in a locked position. And then we'll uh, we'll also do a preacher. Typically, typically single arm. And with my my like arm work at the moment, and for the whole of the off season, I'll literally be doing as much as I can physically recover from whilst the quality is still high. Uh, one thing I've noticed is that when I've tried to really smash the frequency on arms is that inevitably the, the quality just drops off. So I end up just thinking, right, let's do as much as possible. And then uh, I, I'm, not, I'm like, why are my arms not even sore? It's just because like the actual quality of work is so low. I'm just doing more for the sake of doing more. So whenever I enter arm work, I'm thinking, right, I've got, you know, three sets. Today I've got three sets here and three sets on the preacher. Uh, th those six sets all have to count for my arms to be better. So when you're entering weak body part training, don't just think about, okay, let's do as much as possible, which yeah, you ultimately want to do as much as you can recover from, but you want to do as much high quality work that you can recover from. So enter it with the mindset that you want to destroy that body part and then get back in and do it again when it's ready to go. So yeah, second bicep movement before we finish off with some rear delts. Um, single arm preacher. I like the prime, but, but I'm really getting on well with the hammer strength at the moment. It just, it just feels really nice, so that, hence why I'm using that. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, the uh, reason why we do single arm is just because, especially with the hammer strength, the handles are quite bent. So when you go dual arm, Unless you're quite, unless you're very, very narrow and quite slight, uh, you won't really be able to align that well. So, what we want when we're training biceps, especially on a preacher, 
is uh, pretty much a straight line between the wrist joint, the elbow joint, the shoulder joint. So that's what's called like effective joint stacking. So if we can stack all of those guys together and align well, then we can keep it where we want it, which is the bicep. So that's what we're trying to do here pretty much. Uh, and then yeah, we'll show you like reverse pec deck for rear delts and, and we'll cap off the session. So hopefully this one has been like relatively insightful in terms of just understanding a little bit more about how we structure a back day when there's uh, no hip hinge. You could say no lower back loading, but there is lower back loading in the dual arm bend of a row. There's no fun lower back loading really. I think um, I'd much prefer to be doing like an RDL in this session, but uh, it just don't, I don't, we, on, on this split, we just don't have the recovery to be able to do that. If we move back to resting either side of legs, um, which may happen at some point, then we have scope for doing a pull, like a hip hinge on every pull day. But there is definitely benefits, especially for Loz and her back development to do a day where we just purely focus on training the back rather than having a massive hip hinge, which knackers you unless you do it at the end. And then the rest of the session you'll spend recovering from that hip hinge. So rather than training the back properly. So yeah, that's pretty much a wrap from us. Uh, I'll let Loz say anything to, to cap off the session if she wants. But for me, uh, if you watch this, I believe this will come out just after Christmas. So hopefully you had a fantastic uh, Christmas festive period, whether you celebrate or not. Really looking forward to, to this year, 2022, sharing it with you guys. Uh, we've got lots of, of fun things that are gonna be happening, like not just uh, my off season, but documenting the several preps that are gonna take place for my clients. And I've got some absolutely fantastic clients stepping on stage this year. So. I'm pumped, I'm excited. So follow along guys and uh, I will catch you in the next one. Really, really good session today. Uh, just finishing off on the reverse pec decks. We like to just finish off with rear delts. Um, giving a few kind of tips today in terms of like little cues and things that you can think about to help you improve your training of your back, whether that's like your lats or your upper back, if that's something that you really struggle with. And there are obviously cues that have really, really helped me to improve my back training and just obviously grow more muscle in my back, which was something that honestly I had pretty much zero of about 15 months ago. And if I'm gonna give like a main tip to take away from this, like you can take on board all the different cues and, and all these things that maybe your coach is telling you and other people are telling you because ultimately like that's how you need to execute the movement to actually train that muscle group. But the biggest thing that is gonna help you is having confidence with your training and with those movements and with the ability that like you can actually move those loads and you can train those muscle groups because when you have like pretty much no muscle there, you're not gonna feel super strong or you're not gonna feel an amazing connection all the time. Like with my upper back training, it's taken me so long to actually be able to feel my upper back when I train and be like, right, okay, I've actually got some muscle there. Like I can feel my muscle like moving when I'm actually training. Whereas previously I was like, hey, like, am I doing this right? Because I'm going through the movements, like the execution looks good, but I'm not, feeling it or I'm not getting that like connection or that pump because if you haven't got the muscle there it's not going to feel unreal or if you don't naturally get that connection it's not going to feel amazing so you have to be confident in your ability to train you have to stick with it and I promise you that if you keep confident if you make sure your execution is good over time you will get there it will feel good and you will continue to grow so persistence and consistency will always pay off.